Today, we are learning all about the art of posing. When it comes to posing, a lot of people think of top models and high fashion shoots. But with the dawn of social media, anyone can take and post high quality photos of themselves. But being comfortable in front of the camera is definitely a learned skill and something a lot of us struggle with. How can we learn to pose for photos in a way that makes us feel confident and natural and true to ourselves without having to shrink ourselves down? So today, Jade Kenzie, Rachel, and myself met with posing expert extraordinaire Christine Buzan to try and help us with each of our own posing struggles and learn how to level up our Instagram feed. Hi, my name is Christine Buzan. I'm a posing expert. I'm the founder of Look Good in Photos, and I teach women of all shapes, sizes, and ages how to look their absolute best in front of the camera. So a lot of people equate taking photos to vanity. They think, oh, you're taking selfies, you're vain, or you're really concerned with how you look. But the thing is, in our digital age, I think that learning how to pose for photos is one of the most important skills you can have. If you're looking to find a job, chances are you have a photo on LinkedIn. If you're looking for a partner, 30% of people in America who get married find their partner on a dating app, and even if you're trying to make new friends, chances are you're looking at their Instagram or their Facebook to find what you all have in common so you can find common ground and form a better friendship. And I think a lot of the times in the past, learning how to pose for photos was equated with either making yourself look thinner or adhering to some kind of beauty norm. But the truth is that the way that I like to teach people how to pose for photos, it's about expressing who you are authentically without having to contort and mold into something that you're not. I wanna take this posing class because in general, I wanna feel more comfortable in front of the camera. I'm a tall person and I never know what to do with my arms, but mostly my sister's wedding is coming up and I wanna make sure that I don't look awkward in the photos or hide from the camera in such a way that makes me cringe when I look at them. I have been taking a lot more photos of myself lately as I've been trying to re-engage my own social media channels. In doing that, I found that I am the embodiment of peak millennial cringe. And that's fine. It's not really new information by any means, but looking back at the photos I take, I just want to strangle myself. It's a lot of peace signs and fake smiles and closed eyes and sometimes even duck faces, like my brain is still in 2011. I would prefer to just look my age and perhaps look just a little bit more like myself while still showing my personality without always resorting to these awful standbys. Honestly, it's not even that I want to take this posing class, it's that I need to take this posing class. So I am the only one on the team that doesn't have a theater background. So I feel like I'm always the one that just really doesn't know what they're doing on camera. So for videos like these, but also just like for photos in my everyday life, I would just love to have a little knowledge on what to do so I don't just look down every time the camera's on me. Making eye contact with the camera honestly terrifies me. So I just don't. Every photo, I just look away. So I feel like I need this posing class because my job is literally to be on camera and take photos of myself. And yet I feel like I have used the same three tired poses to death. We have the hands out, I'm so happy. The looking away, touching my hair. Or the hands on my hips power pose. That's it, there's three. <laughs> I think the core of my problem is that I grew up viewing posing as just a vehicle to make myself look as thin as I wanted to be in real life, but in pictures. And that was very important to me in my teen years and into my early 20s. And over the years, as I've gone through, you know, my own confidence journey, that need to look thinner in photos has gone away, but I never really learned how to pose in any other way. So now I'm happy to take up space in my photos which I think is where that, you know, arms out or hands on hips comes from. I just, I want to do something different than what I did my whole life, but I don't have anything else that I know I can do. And I need something new. My Instagram feed, she, she's, she's tired. <laughs> and more than having new go-to poses, I wanna learn just how to be more comfortable and relaxed on camera. To find natural poses and express my confidence in new ways. Later in this video, we're gonna be putting our new posing skills to work for a photo shoot and wearing some amazing new items we found on ThreadUp, the sponsor of today's video. ThreadUp is an online thrift store that makes it so easy to get thrifted secondhand items in great condition right from your home. We love ThreadUp, more on them later. So without further ado, 
let's get into the class. So for today, we're gonna start off talking about some of the fundamentals of not only posing, but setting up your shots. We're gonna talk about how the camera, especially using your phone as a camera, impacts the way that you look in photos. And I'm gonna teach some tips that will help them look more natural and more like they do in real life. Because a lot of people tend to find that their iPhones especially distort the way that their face and body looks in photos. So we're gonna work around that. So the thing that most people don't realize is that when they're taking photos with their phone's camera, it's actually a wide angle lens. And when you take photos with a wide angle lens, you're going to get distortion unless you back away from the subject. So I'm gonna take three pictures of Sierra. The first one, I'm going to stand up close to her and do a headshot. The next one, I'm going to back up a bit and not zoom in and try getting the exact same photo. And then for the third one, I'm gonna back up more. I'm gonna zoom into 1.4 and I'm gonna take her photo. I want you to look at how different these three shots look, especially when you look at her eyes and her nose. A lot of the times people are like, why does my face look so weird when I use the back camera? And this is why. So what I recommend doing is backing up from your subject as much as possible and then zooming into 1.4. The thing is your phone's camera has a digital zoom. So basically it's just like the same as cropping a photo and cutting out the excess edges. It's around the edges in our photos that we tend to get that perspective distortion. So we're just eliminating that a little bit. The 1.4 zoom thing is crazy. The difference is subtle, but I feel like it completely made Sierra look more like herself. And this is the one hack that I've been telling literally everyone about. So we're going to do something that I developed called the laughs method. Legs, abs, arms, fingers, face, shoulders. So basically that's the order in which you find your pose. If you look at celebrities walking on the red carpet, you'll see that they do this too. They set up their legs first. From there, they position their abs, so either their shoulders or their chest. Then they pose their arms, they relax their fingers. Then they do their face. Your face tends to hold a lot of tension, so you want to do that second to last. And then they top it off by posing their shoulders to add dimension and depth to their pose. So when we pose for photos, we pose from the bottom up. A mistake that I see that happens a lot, they'll go, they'll strike their pose, and then they'll just forget about their feet. And when you forget about your legs, it looks like you're almost kind of like stuck in quicksand. Your legs provide a strong base for the rest of your body that allows you to move. When you pose, you pose, you keep your legs in one place. Then from there, you're able to tweak the rest of your upper body. And if you want to change your legs, you take a moment, you reconfigure your legs, and then you pose from there. The first and foremost thing when you're posing your legs is you always want your weight to be on one leg. And a lot of us tend to have a dominant leg that we can hold our balance on. So I'll actually make my private coaching students stand like this and see how like which leg they can stand longer on because that's gonna be the leg that you're gonna have firmly planted in the ground. Christine taught us about different ways to position our feet as the base of our pose to either lengthen. When you're posing and you want your legs to look longer, you always wanna keep them in the half, front half like hemisphere of your body. So somewhere between here and if you're crossing over like this. So some of my go-tos if I do want to look long, to the side like this, or I'll go to the front like this, or you can cross it over like that. Accent your curves. Basically, again, you're gonna keep your leg in the northern hemisphere, but instead of having it extended to the front, you can bend that in and curve it. You can either have the super popped leg, which gives you know that, but you can kind of just like cross it like this. You just wanna create like a gorgeous kind of leading line with your leg that really creates like a curve and adjusting kind of the height of your toe to give you that really like dramatic look. Or be casual. The walking movement back and forth, like a leg cross to the back or to the front. You see, this isn't accenting the curves of my body. It's not lengthening, but it's making it look like I'm casual. I'm in the moment, you know, I'm just kind of hanging out. You can do a little kick like this, you know, like a pop like this kick it up, kick it up. You can experiment with that. One of my reoccurring problems in photos is that I, I kind of look stiff. I feel like having an idea on how to set the foundation of my pose with these different techniques and then pose the rest of my body up from there will really help prevent that sort of stuck in the mud look. So next we're gonna move on to the second letter of the laughs method, which is abs, which actually I had to do this to make the acronym fit. It's, <laughs> it says it's abs, but really it is your hips and your shoulders. Shift your hips just backwards slightly. It changes the line of the pose. If I was to shift my hips forward, that could also change the line of the pose. So what I suggest doing is just experimenting and seeing what kind of the most 
natural placement of your hips, what you like the most, how does it feel, and then also shifting your hips to the side. So that also changes the pose slightly. Usually when I'm posing, I'm just worried about what my face is doing and what I should be doing with my arms. I'm not even thinking about my hips or shoulders. And I'm realizing up until now, whenever I'm posing, I'm missing like 90% of what goes into a pose. Just practice it in front of the mirror, practice it taking a video on your tripod, just see how you look different when you position the abs section of your body. Catch me practicing my posing in the mirror every day. It works for real. I am loving the way Christine explains how to pose each area of your body. And it just makes me appreciate like how much posing really is like an art form with your body. Great, next we're gonna talk about posing our arms. That I think is what I need the most help with. You mean there are poses other than this or this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trained basically for centuries in the way that we look at art to look for specific visual cues that tell us where to move along as we're looking at a painting or a photo. So your arms and your hands are kind of like big flashing arrows that tell the viewer's eye where to look. So it's really just about guiding whatever it is you want to show off, whatever it is you want to wear, and whatever story you want to tell. The storytelling really happens with your arms. Christine divides up arm posing into two categories, out of body. Out of body posing is really about taking up space. It's about opening up kind of your chest to the world. And in body. You make connections inside your body, which creates narrowing points that tells the viewer kind of where to look. So it creates a story insight. So it's a good way to sort of put out your personality in the photo. Definitely. It's a great way to express things. You know, someone tends to be more shy and reserved and that's part of their personality. They're not going to be standing, you know, like this. They'll maybe settle for something like this or like this, you know? So it's just about figuring out what feels right for you. And then maybe you do want to try out a different personality depending on the outfit you're wearing. As Christine was explaining this, I realized I've taken poses with in body arms posing completely out of my wheelhouse. I think because I, I felt like posing in that way would make me seem insecure or, you know, kind of reverting back to my old mindset. And I want to come across as confident. I'm proud of my body and my journey, and I've left that pursuit of thinness behind. But I think in doing that, I unknowingly pigeonholed myself into only the out of body poses without stopping to think about like what pose would actually suit the outfit or the scenario that I'm in. And I really loved the in body poses that Christine showed us. And I feel like there's like a quiet confidence within them that I really want to explore where I can look a little more natural and relaxed in some poses without my arms, you know, constantly having to be pulled out away from me. Okay, so I'll keep fingers short and sweet. Main thing is fingers go with your arms. Your fingers are really gonna be the things to tell the viewers where to look. Your body's the star of the show. Your hands tell you where to look. Place my hands here, you're looking at my eyes. Place my hands here, you're looking at my waist. Place my hands here, you're looking at my chest. So keep that in mind. Whatever you're wearing, whether it's like a beautiful gown that you wanna show a detail to, like the slit hand here, the slits being shown off of your dress. So you use them as your tool, basically. I think I was expecting to be given just like a list of 10 poses that are good and then move on. But Christine's class is really teaching us that there are just a million different ways to pose and it's really just about building it up piece by piece. I like that because it's not necessarily about having the confidence to pull off poses that aren't natural to me. It's about finding ways to make this system work for how I want to present myself. I can honestly say I never thought about like my fingers on camera, but now when I'm posing, I can decide what to do with my hands based on what I'm wearing or what I want the focus to be. And I love having the guide on what to do, but also the freedom to make it more me. Let's talk about posing your faces. So I know that the face is always a really touchy subject because no matter how great your pose is, how great your body looks, if your eyes are closed or your mouth looks strange, you just aren't gonna use that photo because there's really no getting around the face. Most common expression, of course, is is the smile. And I find that a lot of people, especially if you're in the United States watching this, you've probably been taught to say cheese whenever the camera comes out. But the problem is when you say cheese, you get a smile that goes out towards your ears instead of up towards your eyes. And that ends up looking really unnatural and strange. So just try it with me. Cheese. 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 Yeah, we're getting a lot of gaps between our teeth and our mouth because our smiles are going outwards. So to fix this, I found that three words that work really well are money. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> money. Money. I love that one. It's a smile and it's a manifestation. Yeah, it's a manifestation, yes. Yoga. Yo, yoga. 
But you have to get caught on the ga, not the oh, <laughs> yoga. But that really brings the smile upward. And that's the one that helps a lot of my students who have a downturn smile. They'll find that yoga will bring, will kind of course correct and bring their smile up. But you have to smile as you're saying it. You can't just be like yoga. You have to be yoga. You have to smile into it. And then hey. 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 So if you're trying to go the more sultry route, prune is really great. So prune, you kind of get a pout with your lips like that. Another two is apple will give you the perfect amount of space in between your mouth. So apple. Apple. Yeah, that's really pretty. It looks really nice on everyone. Another one too, this is actually one that Heidi Klum allegedly uses is pudding. Pudding. <laughs> Yeah, and again, it's kind of, you can end it in a slight smile, you can end it relaxed. Money, yoga, hey. How do you not make that sexual? I don't know. Prune, apple. Oh, that's my bad side, what am I doing? <laughs> apple, pudding. <laughs> Did I do it? <laughs> okay. Another thing too, sometimes people feel self-conscious because their cheeks get really big when they smile. That can easily be alleviated just by giving a little bit of space between your teeth. So you never really wanna, like, you wanna say money, I don't want to bear down on my teeth. I always have a little bit of a gap just to make it more comfortable. So money, so you can see it's open. It brings my jaw down and then my cheeks don't like take up as much real estate on my face and my smile looks happier and more natural. Christine talked about people being insecure with the way their cheeks take up their face when they smile. And this has actually been an insecurity of mine for as long as I can remember. And as we were standing there practicing making faces, it dawned on me that the reason I frequently resort to sticking out my tongue, opening my mouth, or squeezing up my face stems from this insecurity. I guess deep down, I've always felt like if I'm making myself intentionally look stupid, then if someone says I look stupid, it doesn't really matter. I think I fear that if I try and seriously smile or make a pout of any kind, and it comes across looking silly when I didn't mean it to, that it would hurt even more. I think I knew this, but I hadn't really articulated it until we were talking about how to pose your face. And I found myself getting increasingly more and more uncomfortable with the idea of doing anything real. So I definitely need to work on that. So finally, the thing that ties your pose together is your shoulders. So there is a big difference between this and this. When you see celebrities on the red carpet, they go, they strike their pose, they set up you know, their hips, they go in the order of the laugh method, they take their spot. You'll see what they'll do is they'll adjust their shoulders and the placement of their head. That's what keeps that, you're perfect. That's what keeps that movement going into your pose. Though it's not just like, I'm here, you know, like your buddy the elf, like ready for work, you know, like really just kind of lean in and that keeps it fluid, it keeps it moving and will keep you from looking stiff and that's why we do it at the very end. I feel like I always look stiff in photos and I could never pinpoint why until now. Going through the laughs method and learning the order to pose myself in is a game changer, especially for when I freeze up in front of the camera. I can just be like, wait, no, 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 no. Let me just start with my legs, now to my abs, then to my face, relax my fingers, and adjust my shoulders. Then I'm posed. It doesn't have to be like a crazy complicated pose like we see in the magazines. I can look comfortable and natural and use whichever pose I choose to highlight what I want the photo to focus on. Crazy. With everything we learned from Christine under our belt, we decided to take our skills out for an iPhone street style photo shoot to practice posing in the wild. And we got some amazing new to us clothes to rock in our photo shoot from our sponsor, ThreadUp. ThreadUp is an online thrift store where you can get really high quality secondhand clothes from your favorite stores at up to 90% off retail. Some of my favorite and most worn items in my closet have come from ThreadUp. They have amazing stuff. They're so much to choose from and all at a discount. Buying secondhand is also great for the environment. Every time that you wear something secondhand, that saves enough energy to watch two episodes of your favorite TV show. So here's what we got. Click the link in the description to see everything and shop similar items for yourself. I love this blue floral dress that I found on ThreadUp. It was $20.99, almost 50% off the estimated retail price. It has like such a cute girly look with the flowy sleeves and the floral print and this little tie in the front. Just 
love, obsessed, and like it's just such a comfy material and fit. I also got this Old Navy cardigan on ThreadUp that I'm wearing. It worked so great as a beach cover up, but I also feel like it would be so cute with like jeans and a crop top, a little boho look. This army green sort of fitted wild fable crop top from ThreadUp really caught my eye. It's such a great staple piece that looked so perfect with the cargo pants I wanted to wear for the shoot. And it's so comfortable. I'm absolutely obsessed with this silky Zara dress from ThreadUp. I feel like it hugs my curves in all the right places and the slit just makes me feel extra sexy. This River Island shirt was the perfect little cover up for my bathing suit, but also it's the perfect button up to toss over any outfit. I love the fabric and the print and I reach for it all the time. And the deal was unreal. Estimated retail, $51. ThreadUp price? $7.99. This was an immediate add to cart as soon as I saw it. I am obsessed with this Princess Polly pink tie cardigan from ThreadUp. I really like that it's like a muted pink color, but still has such a fun feminine girly feel to it. Definitely a piece I can see myself grabbing often and so great for layering. I also got this Urban Outfitters dress. It was originally $64 and the ThreadUp price was $21.59. I really love the silky fabric and the color is just everything. I feel like it has the potential to be dressed both up and down, so I know I will have so much fun styling it. Shopping on ThreadUp makes buying secondhand so much easier for me since I can filter by my size, my favorite brands. It really cuts out a lot of the work of finding plus size options that work perfect for my body and my style. So thank you again to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Remember to click the link in the description. You can shop our picks and you can use code Sierra for an extra 40% off your first order. Now let's get into the photo shoot. Legs, abs, arms, fingers, face. Kick, kick up your leg a little bit and then, yep, adorable. <laughs> yeah, oh my shoulders. God. There it is. I love it. Kick up, your, kick up your leg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, she's adorable. Yeah. Take off your bag and give me some swing. I like that. I like the hand, other hand. This on one the, here? Yeah, I like that. And then just let that thing swing. I have a bag like this. Sometimes I'll grab like this. Ooh, like, you can and then I'll get dance. that. Or else it's like, hey, we're hanging out at the knees. Oh, that's cute because oh. it's attitude. I like that. That's confident in body posing. Great. I love that. Let's get some variety in the feet. Like, let's get a little bit of, yeah, let's get, thank you. Movement. Yes, I love that. <laughs> oh, she's kicking. She's kicking. Okay, now step into it. There we go. Step it. Yeah. Having Christine to coach us through the photo shoot was amazing. I was able to use the techniques she taught us and have her remind me when I should change it up if I was becoming a little stiff on camera. Plus, she really helped guide me through some confident in-body posing, which I really wanted to focus on in this exercise. All right, who's up next? I feel like since my outfit is so street, I should be in the street. So <laughs> we're going to go to the middle of the crosswalk and we're going to end on that side. <laughs> I'm, <so scared>. I'm <laughs> going to be the embarrassing one because I'm going to be like this. Okay, here we go. It is rock towards the center. Here we go. Christine had this wild idea to take my first set of photos literally in the middle of a busy crosswalk while the cars were stopped at the red lights for like a minute or so. I was a little nervous, but once I was out there and the clock was ticking to get a pose, I actually think the pressure made me more confident because I wanted the shot to work and it was so fun running out there. What a rush. Um, I think the walking and the thinking and the timer kind of add some difficult aspects, but it's obviously doable. So I say grab a friend. <laughs> Tell me this wouldn't be like an America's Next Top, top Model. model it would be. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. One thing that could be cool is sitting on the top of the bench, kind of at yes. an angle this way, so that way the flowers are in the back. Okay. That's really beautiful. Oh, hands. Gorgeous. What shall I do with my legs? <laughs> so you want to keep like the tension here? Okay. So tense here, and then keep this like more of like a continuous Holy line. Workout. Yeah, and then you can kind of play with your hair. Have one on your arm, like one rested. Play with your hair. Yeah, play with the other hair. Beautiful. Oh. That's what we love. We love her. So cute. I love that. I was really scared of the photo shoot, to be honest, and I think I was really relying on Christine's directions at first. But having her train me through it so specifically just gave me more and more confidence to keep finding poses on my own as we kept going. And guys, I even looked at the camera with my eyes. A round of applause! <laughs> with your eyes? With my eyes. <laughs> One of my favorite hacks for taking photos in the place where there's a lot going on. So if you can see, we are in front of a parking lot. So there's cars everywhere. So to fix this, what we're going to do is we are going to take the camera 
we're going to bring it all the way down real low and tilt it backward toward the photographer, so away from the subject. So that is beautiful, which is gonna get rid of a lot of the cameras. I tilt it back even further like that, yeah. So Rachel, you have a slit on that side, which is perfect because you're utilizing that. That will really show off the lines of your body really nicely. And then honestly, I'd take your other hand and I'd rest it, yep, against the telephone. Wow. Wow. And then what you're gonna do to preserve, I'm since it sorry. is a lower angle, lean your chest forward toward the camera slightly. Oh. Yeah. That's so cute. Bring your front arm a little bit higher. Keep it toward the slit. Yeah. In the first photo, I was feeling emboldened from the class to try a bunch of poses I never would have thought of before. I was conscious of my curves and my dress and that confidence carried through the photos and I felt hot. What? Who is uh, that? I know. Sorry. Look at that. It's so <laughs> sexy. Oh my god. Who is she? Who is she? She's you. <laughs> we all took a second round of photos on the streets before sunset with that hands-on guidance and direction from Christine. And it was so nice because any nerves that we had from that first photo were gone and it felt like we all really got to experiment even more with these ones. I feel like my confidence soared with the second set of photos and I was doing poses I honestly never Never thought I would be doing. And with everyone cheering me on, I just kept pushing myself to get the shot. And honestly, I'm really glad that I did. Christine made us feel so normal about taking photos in public and reminded us that nobody watching will ever remember us from the moment, but we will enjoy these photos forever. I was really forcing myself to keep straight faces and exude the confidence that I know I have. And afterwards, I could not wait to get in my bathing suit and go down to the beach for our last round of photos. Okay, we already knew this, but now I know how to work it. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at your final photos. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, I love them. I love them so much. But you know what's really striking me about these photos, especially I think the ones on the lifeguard stand. I'm not really making any kind of jokey face. There's no peace signs. I'm not like making a crazy smile or squishing anything up. And I still feel like I look so hot. Like I'm really happy that I was able to make straight faces and still feel confident because I think one of my biggest fears was that I was just gonna make these straight faces and then look at these pictures and hate them and pretend to like them. But I actually look really good and it looks like me. That's what I look like when I look in the mirror and I love the way I look. It's just like crazy that I can never ever seem to get that in a photograph. But there is a method to getting a really good face for your photo and I'm super happy that I know what to do now. Ever seen me pose like that no! before? No! Amazing! I, I've never posed like this before. <laughs> it's beautiful. Your photos, my dear. I'm scared. Oh. Who is that? I was definitely having more fun with it the more we did it. And I feel like this is gonna be like a muscle memory thing where the more you do it, the more natural and easy it becomes. So I'm excited to keep practicing. The second set I think was definitely my favorite. Christine had me like jumping and frolicking, which I think normally would have had me just cringing to another planet. But being with my friends made it really like fun and silly and I feel like it just really broke me out of that awkward rigidness. And it's just, it's crazy to me how much better photos look when you're loose and having fun. Which also shows the importance of just taking pictures of people that you're comfortable with and doing something that's fun. It definitely still freaks me out to look at the camera, but I feel like the camera and I are working on our intimacy issues. My goodness, wait. Oh my gosh, everybody should go run in the street. <laughs>
I can definitely tell how much more comfortable I am and how I look more planted in a way. And my sister's wedding was last weekend and she got married to Sierra's brother and it was beautiful. And yeah, we're finally family. We're family! <laughs> I feel ready and excited to get the pictures back from it, which normally I would be nervous about for any photos. Usually I would offer to take pictures of everyone else and then look back and feel a bit upset that I didn't feel comfortable enough to be in them myself. But now I have a whole new feeling about it. All of the things Christine has taught me and now normalized for me has really stuck. I can 100% see myself applying these tips and tricks in anything from simple photo shoots for fun or like bigger ones with Sierra and the team. I went from having the same like two poses and feeling so stiff and awkward to now being able to flow through a few at a time, reset, and then continue on. Even when running in the middle of an intersection. so much more relaxed. I feel like I look more natural and less like, now I will strike my pose than I usually do when I take pictures. Even my face, like my, my smile looks so much more relaxed. Christine is a genius. I'm gonna be saying those smile words in my head every time I take a picture. I'm so excited to post these photos. I feel like they're really gonna add something new and different to my feed. Something a little more subdued while still feeling like me. Especially trying more of the posing with those in-body arms. I feel like that just opened up a whole new world of posing for me that I wouldn't have considered. Teenage me would have viewed out of body posing as something not for me, like I need to make myself look small. Me before this class would have viewed in body posing as something that's not for me because I'm confident, gotta have my arms out. And me now, I know that I can use both and I am still beautiful and confident and me. Learning from Christine about how to work through a flow of different poses, I think is also totally gonna change the way that I take pictures. Making those subtle movements and changes to my arms and my face and my upper body to stay relaxed and comfortable while capturing lots of different angles. Instead of just, you know, hitting my same few stiff, poses. <laughs> I've still got lots of room for improvement, but I feel like now I know how to get better. And I can finally get out of that posing rut where all of my photos look the same. <laughs> I feel so much more comfortable now trying new poses and I know how to work through a flow and find something new on the spot. So thank, thank you, Christine, truly like the hero of this video <laughs> and my Instagram feed. <laughs> We had the most amazing day together learning how to pose with Christine. Please make sure to check her out. I'll have her socials and her amazing posing ebook linked in the description. So definitely check it out if you are wanting to take your posing game to the next level. And thank you again to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Remember to shop our picks with the link below and use code Sierra for an extra 40% off your first order. Be confident, be kind to your body, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.